Hello, fellow teachers. Uh, this is an extra little micro training for the week, um, just to look forward to Helaman 7 through 12. Uh, President Nelson is turning 100 soon, and the countdown has begun. And, and Helaman 7 through 12 is so central in, in God's appointed servants, the prophets. So it's, it's just a great timing. Um, we might want to focus on the one and see what we can do each day to focus on the one that President Nelson has encouraged us to do in anticipation of his birthday. Um, this video will be addressed to helping students learn to have a, a nature or a, a culture of sharing, uh, a courage to share and speak up in class. And so let's take a look at some, some ideas and thoughts. First, let's take uh, a look at teaching in the Savior's way. So let's go from this current slide. Help, my students are quiet. Okay, and by the way, that picture right there, I love the Savior, how he's almost looking at us saying, hey, keep walking with me, come follow me. What is up ahead is wonderful. And um, as you continue this course, uh, you're in for a wonderful experience. So keep following me. It's worth it. Um, my class is quiet, or some half of my class is quiet, or how can I help that 60% that, that always relies on the 40% that does talk? Or maybe there's only two that talk, and the rest just kind of ride the boat. How can I help so-and-so feel more comfortable sharing? I hope that this can help answer some of those questions. Um, here's just a few one-liners. In light of how to help establish a culture of sharing, Let's read this in purple. Give learners opportunities to share with each other what they are learning about the Savior and his gospel. How do we set up a classroom so that they feel like they're sharing with each other and not just student teacher? Um, how do we create it like a soccer game where the ball is being passed back and forth instead of just a, a, a boxing match or a one-on-one? -on -one? You know, we want to create a class of this is what we do. Uh, and doing this will give them confidence for the rest of their life. Here's another line. Be careful not to make assumptions based only on what you see. And I would add what you hear. Some students may not be sharing, but it doesn't mean they, ha they don't have, uh, th that they have wonderful things to share. And so let's think of ways to include everyone. Um, take an interest in their lives. Uh, the better you know a person, the better able you are to help them. And I would add to help them feel comfortable sharing and uh, having a, an edifying experience. When a student knows the teacher cares about them, they, they come ready to, to, to act and to please the teacher and to grow. Prayers of a teacher make a big difference. Let's keep praying for each of our students. You can help everyone feel safe and comfortable sharing their concerns with fellow believers. And, um, and you can do that by helping every comment feel valuable. Um, every sincere compliment, comment should feel valued and um, respected. Be sure that in your haste, you don't unintentionally hurry past an urgent need of someone you're teaching. There may be someone who wants to share a story, but they don't feel like there's a culture of, I have time. My teacher is not in a rush. My teacher doesn't feel like they need to get through everything that they've prepared and so I don't want to share. Um, and then the arrangement of chairs. All of this is from teaching in the Savior's way and can help learners feel comfortable to share. Now you'll notice that over here I put validate all sincere efforts. I, I want that to be salient in our minds and most important because any sincere effort should receive validation. Sometimes students feel like only the all-star answers get the best praise, but sometimes a student gives a widow's might answer and it's the best answer they can give. So here's a couple of thoughts. Feel free to take one or two or all of these. Adopt the questions in the student manual or the teacher manual and then adapt them. You know your students, you might need to tweak them a little bit so that they're questions the students can really relate with and be ready for. You don't need to ask all of them. Sometimes questions can seem a little mechanical and students pick up on that 
and they just don't quite want to answer it because it feels more from the manual than from a meaningful heart. With each question, give time to process, to ponder. Consider giving an example first. Um, anticipate why a teenager doesn't volunteer. Here's a couple of ideas. I need more time. I'm distracted. I'm thinking about the boy in my math class. I didn't hear the question. I don't know the answer. I'll look dumb in front of my peers. I'm not sure if this is what the teacher is really looking for. The question was a little vague to me. I'm shy. I just am scared. Those two in the class have all the answers. They're going to raise their hand. Uh, I never have a good answer. The teacher never praises my answer. Um, only wants to hear the all-star answers. So a couple more thoughts. Give an assignment for the next day. Give partner work. Let them talk and process with another. Questions that are written down are always going to be more uh, successful. Uh, journal time gives time to prepare and process and be successful. Have a choice of questions. This one's very successful. And then give everyone a chance to respond. Because they have a choice, one, two, three, or four, pick one of these four questions, and two of them can be very simple. Everyone feels like they can succeed. And that's what teenagers really feel like they want in a class. A gradual approach. Start with start at the beginning of class with what's your favorite ice cream, kind of an icebreaker. Then go to what's your favorite quality in a friend. Everybody can answer those and then get into something a little bit more related to the lesson. And There's already a, an established culture. They can interview a partner. This can be done over Zoom as well. Uh, they can share emojis on Zoom as well. Um, and then share their partner's response when they come back all together. These are all things that hopefully can inspire students to create and feel comfortable uh, having a culture of sharing. Take care, enjoy the week, and by the way, look what's coming up. Helaman 7 through 12, the Lord's appointed prophets. Um, and uh, when you get to Helaman 11, take a look at verse 23. Whether you teach this or not, think about why we have doctrinal mastery and why we do seminary and why we have church in general. It's a great verse. And then chapter 12 is a great opportunity to play a little bit with what we're fast at doing and what we're slow doing. You could have a little activity associated with that. Take care. Enjoy. Oh, and doctrinal mastery review. You could play around with flashcards. Let everybody make 12 flashcards with the reference on one side and the uh, phrase on the other. And then you can use them the rest of the semester in a variety of ways and Sometimes it only takes five minutes to do a quick little flashcard activity. And I'll talk more about that another time. Take care, everyone.